light of infinite. This week has been a bit more challenging navigating the ups and downs that come with living this life in exile. As Mark Ronson says, nothing breaks like a heart. And I woke up today and it hit me that we're all just scattered pieces of a broken soul trying to come together and make it whole. The Parsha opens up with, And you will command the children of Israel that they shall take for you clear olive oil, crushed for illumination, to light a lamp continually. What strikes me is that the action we are commanded to take is a physical action in a moment, plucking an olive, squeezing, grinding, and crushing it for its oil in order to elevate it. And what's to follow is illumination and a continual light. It's the same in life. Only after self-sacrifice can we merit seeing purity illuminate our souls. The Mishkan, the tabernacle, which we read about last week, was built to rectify the sin of the golden calf, because sin obscures the light of Hashem and the light of Emunah. Rab Natan of Breslov teaches that once B'nai Israel accomplished building the Mishkan, they aroused divine will instead of anger. By lighting the lamps, they expressed the desire that the light of Hashem should never be extinguished within them. The stories leading up to this moment in the Torah continuously show us a Yurida, a descent, prior to an Aliyah, an ascent, because the height and light come from the falls and the darkness. And since everything physical is a reflection of a spiritual counterpart, there is no Aliyah, ascent, without a proper Yurida, a descent. So we have to stay faithful and focus on the light or we get consumed by the darkness. We look at ourselves like the olives going through life, feeling crushed at various stages, but remain hopeful that from the crushed moments comes the elevation, comes the light. We can stay faithful on our path towards our own ascension and redemption. At every moment in life, our decisions can be fueled by fear, constantly questioning in a state of uncertainty, or we can operate from a place of faith, realizing that whatever is meant to be will be. And when we put our trust in that process, if we are open to believing that what is meant for us will come to us, and the crushed parts of the path that we are on will illuminate the darkness like a light shown in a dark room. Greater the darkness, the greater the light. The Lubavitcher Rebbe teaches that if light is the purpose of every created thing, then light also must be the purpose of darkness. So we learn that darkness isn't meant to be avoided, but transformed into light. This is just a snippet. I wrote about shamanic Judaism and so much more in this week's VAR, which you can read in full at lightofinfinite.com. Shabbat Shalom.